Well, here we are. Welcome to the final review of the Hollow Scream review series. Let's not waste any time and get straight into it. Oh, and spoilers. Big spoilers. So you got five seconds to make like my sweet dreams and flee from Carter Man's grand miracle. Okay then. Halloween ends. Out of all the Halloween movies, I think I can say that this one felt closer to the original than any of the others. Will that mean this movie will get unanimous praise? <laughs> no. With the direction this movie takes, hell no. Now, let me say this. I would say this movie is 60% solid. The other 40% hinders this movie greatly. More on why later. First off, let's get some of the big stuff out of the way. I'll start with where this movie picks up post-Halloween Kills. One year after Kills, Michael's been MIA. The people of Haddonfield have been severely affected by what Michael has done. People have killed or committed suicide. It's a plot point that Kills was trying to go with, that Michael's influence on people is making them become evil. The spirit of Michael Myers is corrupting Haddonfield for all intents and purposes. As a result of all the bad that's happened, people are on the edge. We get a voiceover and several shots of Lori as she sees the carnage that has gripped the town. We then get introduced to Corey Cunningham. Hmm, Cunningham, huh? Like the director of the first Friday the 13th, Sean Cunningham. So Corey's your typical nerdy dude who's doing a little babysitting for a kid that appears nice and innocent. Corey and the kid are watching John Carpenter's The Thing on TV. A nice reference to the original Halloween where everyone is watching The Thing from another world. As they talk, we find out that the kid Corey's babysitting is a complete shithead. I mean, he calls Corey ugly and friendless or some bullshit like that. Man, screw this little asshole. Send him to the sewers for Pennywise to fuck up. Oh! Anyways, as the scene goes on, the little shit decides to play a prank and lock Corey up in the attic room. He kept saying Michael Myers is going to get Corey, and Corey starts panicking and trying to bust down the door. While this is happening, the parents are getting home, and as they walk into the house, Corey gets free by busting down the door like Psycho Dad. Give us like 10 seconds. You're not coming in here, the door is locked. Holy shit! Unfortunately, or fortunately, if you think the little shit deserved it, by busting down the door, the kid gets hit in the face and falls off the balcony and splat, dead. Well, uh, didn't see that coming. Long story short, Corey gets arrested and Haddonfield is yet again struck with another tragedy. The thing is, though, that this was an accident, aka not intentional. Skip ahead three years later, and we get the rest of the story. Lori and Allison are living a normal life, Michael Myers has been at MIA for a total of four years now, and everything seems normal, all things considered. We get reintroduced to Corey, he's got a job at a junkyard site, and he ends up meeting Allison via Lori's intervention. In the end, they start dating. He gets a new ride, and all seems decent. That is, until he runs across some jackass bully tropes who look like they just came straight from Rob Zombie's world. I mean, look at this asshole's haircut. Oh! As they have a little scuffle, Corey gets thrown over the bridge and dragged into the sewer. Jesus Christ, I, 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 I don't know, it just it feels like we're starting to get a little it vibes, huh? And at this point, this is where people will start to have major problems if they don't already. Corey's wandering through this isolated section of the sewer and gets grabbed by, guess who, Michael Myers. And at this point, most of us already guess that this guy is dead. I mean, after all, anyone who comes across this bastard usually ends up dead anyway. But regardless, instead of killing him, Michael lets him uh, live. And not only that, but lets him escape too. But something's different. When Michael grabbed Corey, they look into each other's eyes and Corey begins seeing the night he killed that little shithead. As he gets out, it's almost as if a switch has been turned on. He goes from being a nice but troubled guy to a bad boy, Christine style. Another long story short, Corey begins helping Michael kill. So the Haddonfield Boogeyman is back, and this time he's got a little helper in a scarecrow mask. This all escalates to the point where Michael and Lori show down for the final time, and Lori, with Allison's help, is victorious. They successfully kill the Boogeyman by, uh, bleeding him out. Yeah, okay, I know. What the fuck? But 
we'll talk about that logic later. For now, let's address one of the big elephants in the room and why people are not liking what this movie has done. Corey Cunningham. In the minds of some, Corey has taken the spotlight from Michael. Some are probably saying the movie puts too much focus on this kid and ruins the movie. So what are my thoughts? Well, I'm indifferent about it. Why and how? Well, entertain my perspective for it if you would, dear viewer. After going through this entire franchise, going from greatness to the ninth circle of giraffe hell, I've endured some of the biggest bullshit this franchise has to offer. I've already come to the conclusion that Halloween will never get to the greatness of the 78 film, so the movie focusing on Corey doesn't phase me like it would other people. I.e., I'm not really bothered by it. At the same time, it's actually not a terrible plot and character arc. In fact, I would say that it's one of the strongest aspects of this film. Seeing an innocent character go down this path was very interesting, and the filmmakers did a fantastic job with developing the character of Corey. My only critique is that this story is misplaced. Why? Well, this isn't an issue of the movie itself. More so, it's on the fault of the filmmakers. This story and Michael's return after those years should have been in the first movie. Put simply, Halloween Ends, and to be more specific, its story, should have been the start of the Blumhouse trilogy. Remember when I criticized the 2018 film for being a rehash of the 78 film? Well, I would say that Halloween Ends is how to do a Halloween movie that is similar to the 78 film right. The biggest thing aside from Laurie and Michael's story going for this film is the slower burn and, sh and showing a proper character arc. Why they didn't have a similar mindset for the overall trilogy, I have no idea. And I know that many people will not like how this movie put more focus on Corey, and believe me, I understand those feelings. Here's the problem. Halloween Kills was all about Michael. In fact, they hyped him up so much that there was nowhere else for him to go but down. The order of these movies are completely fucked up. Halloween Ends should have been the beginning, and Halloween Kills should have been the finale. I mean, Jesus Christ, they hyped up Evil Dies Tonight so much as if that was the conclusion of the story. And to the people that think the Corey story is so bad, look at the previous bullshit we got. The White Horse crap, the incest of Thorn, the entire existence of Halloween Resurrection. The Corey Cunningham story is not the weak link of Halloween Ends. How they handled Michael Myers is. The 60% of the film that's good lies with Corey's story and the story of Laurie and Allison. The 40% that shit lies with what they did and didn't do with Michael Myers, among other things. The story of Halloween always focused on Michael Myers and the shape. And because Blumhouse blew their proverbial load with the epicness, terror, and sheer strength of Michael in Halloween Kills, there was nothing left for him. Halloween Ends quite literally made him a weak old man who needed the help of a 20-something-year-old kid to kill people. Or, as Laurie said in Kills, I always thought Michael Myers was flesh and blood, just like you and me. But a mortal man could not have survived what he's lived through. The more he kills, the more he transcends into something else impossible to defeat. This is complete bullshit. Michael never needed help, and tying his powers in with when he kills is also bullshit. It's like if he doesn't kill, he loses his power. This is almost Cult of Thorn bad, and what's worse is that they don't explain that Michael's supernatural. Instead of being blunt and honest, they beat around the bush, and Michael dies in a pathetic way. Now look, I'm not asking for an epic Lord of the Rings Sauron death here, I just feel that if Michael is supernatural, give him a more fitting death. Because let's be honest here people, Michael has endured too much damage already to be killed by losing blood via a throat and ritz slit. At least Halloween 2 had a more legendary death, I'm less mad about Corey and more mad about Michael's treatment. I think I can say that this movie overall is well done. It's not a shit fest like Resurrection, and it's slightly better than most of the sequels we've received. The only thing holding it back is how they handled Michael, and that's something I want to touch on again. More specifically, how I would have handled Michael and his death. Recall my little fan theory about Michael Myers from the original film in my Rob Zombie Halloween 2 review. To put it in a simple format, I think that Michael Myers in John Carpenter's Halloween is possessed by an evil spirit or demon. Now, don't get this confused with Halloween 6's explanation, however similar it may seem. Like the movie itself, my idea is simple. At some point before Halloween night 1963, the little child known as Michael Myers was taken over by a demon. 
This demon, being in control of Michael, killed Judith, and after it was done, it relinquished control of Michael for the time being. Michael, being fully conscious about what had taken place, runs out of the house. When his parents arrive and take the mask off, we see Michael's in a state of shock. It's the kind of face one makes when they witness something terrible. Being put in a state of shock as a result of killing his own sister, he retreats into himself. He doesn't speak, nor does he do anything resembling life. He merely exists as a physical being occupying a space. It is because of this absence of consciousness that the demon that overtook him is now in full control. Michael Myers is merely a passenger in his own body. In an effort to reach the boy inside, Dr. Samuel Loomis is assigned to oversee the boy. As the years go by, Dr. Loomis begins to realize that a human being is not occupying the body he sees before him. He doesn't know exactly what it is, and in a way, the details of what it is doesn't matter. All Dr. Loomis knows is that what is lying behind the face of this human being is purely and simply evil. Something dark and malevolent is inside of this boy, and he must never get back to the world as only carnage would lay in his wake. Come the night before Halloween 1978, the shape escapes its prison and seeks to go back to familiar territory, to the place where it first unleashed its unholy power. If Michael Myers, the human, has been possessed by the demon we will refer to as the shape, then it's safe to say that Halloween End's line of evil doesn't die but changes shape would fit almost perfectly with my little theory. To put it in the context of the ending to Halloween Ends, have Michael's body be completely destroyed, then show someone like, say, Corey pick up the Myers mask, and thus, the shape lives on. The only problem is that people would be very upset that we would be leaving Michael Myers behind. And to a certain extent, I understand this feeling. I mean, we've been following Michael for so long, and let's be honest, hearing about a mask killer named Corey Cunningham doesn't quite have a ring that Michael Myers does. Based on all the time we spent with Corey and Allison, I can't help but think that Blumhouse was trying to leave the door open for more Halloween sequels that would focus on Corey and Allison, while putting Michael and Lori's story back on the shelf. Could it have worked? Possibly. My friend and fellow YouTuber and Patreon supporter Kyle from Return of the Living Flet even said that Ends felt more like an anthology film rather than a direct Halloween film. Overall, I think that if Michael was handled better, and if they didn't kill off Corey, Halloween might have continued. It probably could have worked with an anthology angle, and then eventually returned to Corey and Allison's story with the overall villain still being the shape. And who knows, maybe in 10 years we'll see the shape again. Because if my little theory has any validity as Halloween Ends itself has left as a possibility, it could happen. Okay, so I want to address the different camps that feel what they feel about Halloween Ends, and give my final thoughts. To start off, I'm going to be reading an excerpt from Chris Snyder's review on Letterboxd. Make sure to check out his review when you get a chance. And a thank you to Chris for allowing me to use some of his review. So how does the final movie of the David Gordon Green H40 trilogy land for me personally? I love the shit out of this movie. It's not perfect. There are definitely things I would have done differently, but this was so refreshing for me. I'm a huge fan of Halloween 2018. Not the biggest fan of Halloween Kills, but this could not be more different than the previous two movies. And that's what I love most about it. I completely understand how fans will be pissed off and hate this movie for taking a new direction. But this is the 13th film of the franchise. How many times do you want the same thing over and over again? And I will say this. As a final film in the trilogy, it's out of place. It doesn't fit with the previous two much at all. However, as a standalone Halloween movie, I think it was great and so much fun. Respect to Blumhouse and David Gordon Green and company for having the balls enough to go this way. So... Chris is of the camp that Corey's story is good. He enjoyed that aspect and, like me, acknowledged that not everyone will like that the story has Corey at center focus, all things considered. He also thinks the story is misplaced in this trilogy, and this goes back to what I mentioned earlier about Kyle's thoughts. Because this movie doesn't directly focus on Myers as much as the previous film in the trilogy, it feels a little disconnected. Obviously, this is in the same universe as Michael Myers, but with that said, the movie feels more standalone than a sequel. Is this a good thing? Well, yes and no. On one hand, having Halloween go to the anthology route is something they should have done after the first movie, while at the same time keeping each new story in the same universe as the original Michael Myers story. Had it been done successfully and having a sparing use of Michael, Halloween as a franchise could have been a very successful juggernaut of a horror franchise. At the same time, because this movie put less focus on Michael and more on a new character thanks to Halloween Kills, I feel like this is going to be Halloween 3 Season of the Witch all over again. Both Ends and Season of the Witch went down a different route that was a fairly sizable step away from the norm. Both stories were simple, yet still entertaining enough that people acknowledged the film's values. And both have split the fan base a significant amount. Though if Michael was handled better in this movie, I think the split would be reduced by a good amount. 
Now, let's take a look at the other side, specifically those who did not like it. From what I could find, one of the biggest issues aside from how they use Michael is Corey and the movie's focus on him. After watching Ends for the first time, the first thought that ran through my head was that people will not like that he gets so much attention and how it's basically his movie. For me, I just don't care at this point. After going through the Thorn trilogy, Resurrection, and Jake Myers, I just don't have the energy to be pissed off anymore. On one hand, I completely understand why people would be upset. I would be too if I had more investment in this trilogy. The thing is that the Blumhouse trilogy screwed up from the start. The 2018 film was The Force Awakens of this trilogy. It did nothing new and rehashed the same basic plot of the original. Halloween Kills decided to take a page from Rob Zombie's book and focus heavily on seeing Michael in full view and racking up a body count like he's goddamn Jason Voorhees. Halloween Ends tried to go back to fundamentals and tell a full story in detail, but will likely fail to capture audiences, at least for now. Give it a good 10 years, and you might see more fans give it a chance. As I said earlier, my perspective on the Corey story is that it was misplaced. The movie felt like a Halloween film at certain points, aside from some stupid stuff. With that said, seeing Corey's accident and his descent into darkness felt similar enough to Michael in the first film, albeit with extra details and a more tragic villain angle rather than evil incarnate. Alright, let's get into some more issues I have with this movie. These problems range from bad storytelling to poor decision making on behalf of the filmmakers. To start off, trying to make Michael's influence on the people of Haddonfield cause them to do bad things is flawed, at least with the way they told it. This issue also ties in with an even bigger problem that affects the whole film and story that they've been trying to tell in this trilogy. The filmmakers try to tie Michael's influence with evil and how it's like a force of nature, words that John Carpenter himself used to describe Michael in the original film. Here's my issue. They took who was supposed to be evil incarnate and treated him like a plague bringer, that Michael could infect anybody he touches. Now, while this idea does sound interesting, it just doesn't fit with Michael, and it doesn't fit with Halloween. Halloween was very personal and specific with one evil individual. The story in the original never suggested that Michael killing people would influence others to do the same and therefore spread evil like a disease. It was always one man, one boogeyman, if you will. Adding on to that is the subject of Michael being supernatural. So, is he supernatural? Eh, who knows and who cares, because Michael gets killed anyway but he doesn't die by some spell or getting stabbed by the Kandarian dagger. They just bleed him out like a stuffed pig, and then for good measure have a public gathering with his body getting destroyed at the junkyard. And for all intents and purposes, that's the end of the story. There's no explanation of how he's able to survive the amount of damage he took, they just brush it under the rug and say it's over. And from that angle, I can absolutely understand why people hate this film. They don't focus on Michael enough, and when they do, it's executed with the finesse of Amazon trying to update Tolkien's Lord of the Rings trilogy for a modern audience. Ah! And this isn't even including the bullshit logic of the townspeople blaming Laurie Strode for Michael coming back to Haddingfield, despite having public information to the contrary, these characters even existing, this character's lousy aim, the fact that Corey can somehow survive at least two point-blank shots from a revolver, fall off the second floor of a house, stabbing his own throat, and once again, this asshole's haircut. Ah! So, would I recommend watching Halloween Ends? Well, it depends on you, the viewer. If you had an investment in this trilogy and want to see how the story ends, sure, knock yourself out. If you're a hardcore Myers fan like me, you may want to skip out just because of how they treat Michael in this film. If you're a casual horror fan who doesn't give a shit about Michael Myers in Halloween, you might find this one to be boring and less gory and intense compared to most shitty horror films these days. For me, I'm indifferent. On one hand, this movie had some strong points that I did enjoy. On the other hand, this film's treatment of Michael and a personally unsatisfying ending takes me out. Maybe I set myself up for failure by expecting Blumhouse to utilize Michael's supernatural background that they threw in our faces in Halloween Kills. If they utilize my theory of Michael being possessed by the shape, a demon, the story could have continued with Corey and Allison. But unfortunately, like before in the history of this franchise, they pissed away another great opportunity. Maybe in 10 years we will see the shape return. Until then, let him rest. He's earned it after this mediocre trilogy. And let's see Jason Voorhees come back already, goddammit. Yeah, he's back. He's the man the well, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. The final review of the Hollow Screen Review series. It's been one hell of a ride. And although I don't really appreciate the Halloween sequels as much as I used to, the bright side is that it all enhanced my enjoyment of the original that much more. And in my mind, Michael Myers was never caught in 1978. Which means, he's still out there. Somewhere.
pony shit later, you little furry bastard. Well, tell her I'm gonna be a little late. All right? All right, thank you, stupid bastard. All right, you, what? White trash, son of a snowblower. Wolverine better find my pony shit. Thank you. 